Unleavened bread, happy feast of unleavened bread. Somebody give the Most High a shout of victory for unleavened bread. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise God! Feast of Unleavened Bread is all about righteousness. So I want to thank each and every one of you for taking time out of your reverence to come out of your obedience to the commandment which we are about to read right now from uh, Leviticus 23 and 3. Brother, let's get those precepts. And uh, from the Gospel of Luke, the fourth chapter. We always want to come with the scriptures to give a reason why we do what we do. You stand and read it once you get there, brother. Leviticus 23 reads, And the Most High spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Most High, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation, even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Shabbat of rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Shabbat of the Most High in all your dwellings. And let's go from there to the Gospel of Luke, the fourth chapter. Yes. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Shabbat and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. So we understand that uh, Hamashiach, of whom the world called Christ, of whom the world called Jesus, that he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, on the seventh day, out of his reverence for the Torah. So, uh, if we're going to be a true follower of Hamashiach, if we're going to be a true follower of Hamashiach, Yahweh or uh, who some say is Hamashiach, yeah, Yahusha, I don't get in that debate, okay? Uh, if we're going to be a true follower, we're going to have to do what he did which is he kept the Shabbat, okay? And uh, that's what it means to practice what he practiced, and he practiced Torah. So welcome to Shabbat Fellowship here in Fort Worth, Texas. We are the first organized Hebrew Israelite Hamashiach, a Hamashiach congregation of Fort Worth, Texas. I am, my profile is I am uh, Malachi, P.L. Reynolds, the facilitator, chief administrator, coordinator, and ambassador, a.k.a. apostle of this ministry. And I want to personally, from my household, to each and every household that is represented here, want to personally thank you for taking time out of your reverence for the Most High to come in fellowship. I love you all, and I'm praying for you all. Those of you who I know, and those of you who I don't know, so get a almighty eye hand clap praise. Uh, at this particular time, our um, praise singer isn't here at this time. Uh, but I want to encourage other brothers and sisters uh, to help out this ministry and our praise team. Okay, it's nothing wrong with Praising the Most High. It's nothing wrong with it. You understand? Uh, that's, some, that's, that's something that this Hebrew Israelite awakening is, is missing. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, and this Hebrew Israelite awakening also, go to Exodus the 12th chapter. Uh, it's also uh, more than just quoting scriptures. You understand? It's, it's, it's more than just quoting scriptures and and uh, seeing who got the most knowledge and uh, 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 the, the scriptures, the purpose of the scriptures, I did a video on YouTube about the purpose of the scriptures is, is to correct you from your errors 
and from sin and to teach you to be righteous. Hello? Amen. And last week I wanted Elder Timotheus, Timotheus, did I say that right? Timotheus, I wanted you to speak last week, but the Ruach told me that he wanted me to first bring out uh, what I spoke about last week. Who remember what I spoke about last week? Structure, family values, and you also spoke about uh, uh, being a listener first and not being a teacher unless you're called to come to do that. Exactly. Exactly. The scriptures, they teach family structure, okay, and family order. And the reason why I, I, I I was so uh, pressed to do that by the root up, you understand, was because uh, the number one uh, response that police officers get, the number one call that they get involves uh, domestic dispute. Hello? Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Domestic dispute. Okay? And if we run it around here as Hebrew Israelites, Saying that we know, uh, uh, we keep the commandments, and and uh, 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 we know, we know, we got, the, we had the solutions to the community. You understand? Well, these scriptures should be helping us uh, 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 to construct ourselves. You understand? And to produce the fruit of righteousness, which is family values, right? Now, it doesn't mean that if you're in the scriptures that you won't have no strife with, with loved ones and family members. It doesn't mean because, it, because if you can be following the truth and somebody else is not following the truth, of course there's going to be conflict. You understand? But the scriptures, they teach family values. Okay? Somebody say family values. Family values. They teach family values. And that's another thing that this Hebrew Israelite awakening is missing. Which, that's making us look like a cult. I can put Baptist, I can put Baptist on this ministry and, and it'll fill up. But if you put Hebrew Israel like awakening on there, a lot of people gonna think we a cult or they gonna run from us because of a lot of foolishness a lot of Hebrew camps are doing to make us all look bad. Amen. Even when I go into a Sunday church, I don't go in there disrespecting the pastor like so many Hebrews are doing. You have no authority to do that. You're out of order. That's like me going in Brother uh, Nehemiah's house. I don't care if I am right. I still have no business going in his household right or wrong to disrespect his household because he's the head of that house. Likewise, that. likewise, when it comes to the ministry, I may not know everything, and I never have claimed to know everything, but no one has the right to come in here and to, and to try to undercut my authority as a pastor or as an apostle or an, ab or an ambassador of the Most High. And I went to the Most High because I have keep people out. You understand? I, I have. I've had this trouble with, with years because, uh, see, I'm a very compassionate man. I'm, I'm very compassionate. I'm very liberal. I don't trip about the name Yahusha, Yahawasha. I don't even trip on about the name Jesus if somebody's on that level. I don't trip on that because you have to catch a fish before you can cling a fish. Use some wisdom. Use wisdom. But the Most High, because I went to the Most High about this, and the Most High said, sit down. He said, if they did it, don't you know why they're doing it to you? Because they did it to Moses in the wilderness. His own siblings tried to undercut his authority, right? Mm -hmm. And then he said, they tried to do it to me too. So you're not greater than Moses, and you're not greater than me. But here's the thing that you should rest assured of, the Most High told me, is that you can rest assured that just as Moses was anointed, and of course I was anointed, he says, you are anointed. I, I, that was for self-edification. You understand? Hallelujah. That was for self-edification. You know what I'm saying? You know, 
Because I was praying in the Ruha. I was praying in the spirit. I know some of y'all don't believe. You understand? I know some of y'all just believe that the Hebrew is the only tongue. But I pray in the Ruha. That's that heavenly tongue. Yeah, I speak in tongues. Yeah, so I just don't do it in the, uh, in, in the, in the assembly because you're not supposed to unless there's an, an interpreter. You understand? But that's for self-edification. Hebrew is not the main language. You better get the Ruach with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's self-edification. You don't throw it away just because some in the Son of Theology may, mis may, may be misusing and abusing it. You don't put that away. That's real. Now quickly, quickly. This is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Uh, before we get this brilliant teacher up, uh, I want to quickly go over the Feast of Unleavened Bread, okay, and get and, and get the conclusion about the Feast of Unleavened Bread or the Feast of um, Fermentation, okay? Quickly, quickly. Uh, let's go to Exodus, the 12th chapter. Exodus, the 12th chapter. Start from the 15th through the 20th verse. Read. Exodus 12, verse 15 reads, Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leaven bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Now the feast that came before the Feast of Unleavened Bread is what? Passover. Passover. Okay. So now we are uh, 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 at, at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, okay? Uh, and we're going to find out what it's all about and hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Go. 16. And in the first day, there shall be a holy convocation. And in the seventh day, there shall be a holy convocation. Now, this is the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It started sundown Friday. Correct me if I'm wrong. Right. It, yes, it did. Okay. okay so, so it started sundown Friday. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and we, we should do a holy convocation. Now, when it says... These feast days are what are what the Bible call high Sabbath. holy Sabbaths, mm -hmm. meaning it's not the weekly Sabbath. The right. weekly Sabbath is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But uh, uh, this, well, what the brother is reading is one of the high Sabbaths. Mm -hmm. Read on, brother. Verse seventeen, down to the verse twenty verse. Start. I'm gonna finish there. No, it's so almost start over back on the top of 16. Okay. And in the first day, there should be a holy convocation. And in the seventh day, there should be a holy convocation to you. No man of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. Did you want to? Uh, go down. Okay. Did you want to? That's, that's 15 through the 20 verse? No, nah, we got mm -hmm. 17 to see God. Oh, go ahead. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in the selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. In the first month on the 14th day of that month, at even ye shall eat unleavened bread until the 1 and 20th day of the month at even. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel. Whether he be a stranger or born in the land, ye shall eat nothing leaven, and all your habitation shall ye eat unleavened bread. Now we see that the uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread, like the Passover, was instituted where at? Uh, uh, Egypt. In Egypt. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, uh, 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 the uh, commandments are, are, are clear cut. Right. And, and let, me, let, let me say this too. I will never speak against Torah. I will never teach against anything that's been commanded by Torah. Okay? But it just, the thing about this particular ministry is that we highlight what will save us, which is the spiritual intent of. The Torah of the feast days. They all have a spiritual intent. Our forefathers, they they kept the letter of the law, but did it save them? Hello? Because let me tell you one thing. I, 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 I'm going to get to that later. But I want to move through this quickly. Go to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Leviticus 23. 5 through 8. Read. When everybody there say Cain. 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 Leviticus 23 and 5 reads, 
in the 14th day of the first month and even is the Elohim's Passover. And on the 15th day, the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Most High. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. In the first day ye shall eat, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein, but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. So for seven days, we're supposed to eat unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, uh, as my brother Ethan uh, taught me, uh, un, uh, ferment, unfermented bread. Ferment, fermented bread. Yeah, unfermented uh, bread. Thank you, brother. Unfermented bread, which is ferment. It's like what causes the rise of the bread. Okay, right. so uh, so these, these instructions are very clear cut, right? right? You don't have to know Hebrew. Hallelujah. You don't have to know all that Hebrew. No. But I encourage you to learn Hebrew. Right. Mm -hmm. It's important. That's our original language. Learn it. Mm -hmm. I learn it. Love it. Embrace it. Yes. Okay? But it, 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 this is clear cut. Okay? Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. Now we're going to hear the conclusion to the whole matter concerning the Feast of Unfermented Bread, a.k.a. Unleavened Bread. Okay? Uh, that's 1 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. Everybody there say Cain. Cain. What verse you want to start it? Uh, from the top. Because I want, I want, I want, I want us to get the, the, the context of right. it, okay? Right. I don't, I, uh, 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 one thing I don't like doing, I don't like taking scriptures out of context. Because my father in, in the uh, gospel, he taught me in San Antonio, whenever you take scriptures out of context, you leave room for error. Right. Okay? Uh, so start from the top, brother. Let's find out what 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 is what this all about. First Corinthians five and one reads. Oh, hold, hold up. And this particular epistle, epistles are letters, okay? And this epistle, and this uh, epistle uh, was addressed to the church, not to the world. Mm, right. The only thing that's addressed to the world is to repent. That's it. Of your sin. That's it. To repent from being a transgressor. And what is a transgressor? Someone who breaks the Torah. Mm -hmm. If you're not keeping the Sabbath, you're in sin. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're not eating clean food, you're in sin. Mm -hmm. Read on. 1 Corinthians 5 and 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named in the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned, that he had done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present, concerning him that he that had so done this deed. In the name of our Adonai, as in the name of our Adonai, Yahweh, when you gather together in my spirit with the power of our Adonai Yahweh Shah to deliver such as one unto Satan for the destruction of flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Adonai Yahweh Shah your glory is not good know ye not that a little leaven leaveth the whole lump what know ye not that a little leaven leaveth the whole lump now this epistle letter is addressed to the congregation of the saved, the congregation of the set apart ones, mm -hmm. the congregation of Yah in Yahusha or Yahusha, whatever your Hebrew preference. I ain't tripping. Mm -hmm. You understand? Uh, 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 but he said this don't belong here. This type of behavior doesn't belong here. This this type of immorality doesn't belong here. Right. Mm -hmm. And then he brings out for the little leaven. Leavens the whole lump. Right. Read it, brother. Seven. Purge out there for the old leaven. What? Purge out there for the old leaven. What? Purge out there for the old leaven of sin. Read on. That ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Hamashiach, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Who's our Passover? Hamashiach. Who's our Passover? Hamashiach. Who's our Passover? Hamashiach. Read on. Eight. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. What? Leaven of what? Malice and wickedness. Read on. But with the unleavened bread of sincerity and of truth. Ooh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, so it's not just about a piece of bread, bread right. filled with fermentation. It's not just about all. It's not just about some bread that without that that is without fermentation. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's something deep about this thing. Mm -hmm. So, so it's not just a, 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 a letter of instructions about something tangible. Mm -hmm. There's something deeper about this bad boy. See, we have to understand that the Hebrew writer said that for the word of Yah is sharpening a two-edged sword. Uh, and it has a double meaning to it. Mm -hmm. Most people, like our, our, like our dear brothers and sisters who are quote-unquote Torah-only brothers, they never get past the letter of the law. They're so focused on the letter of the law that they neglect the spiritual intent of the law. This is why Paul had so much trouble dealing with our forefathers concerning the circumcision. Because they were so focused on circumcision in the flesh and neglected the circumcision of the heart. Y'all see that? Hallelujah. So read on, brother. Verse 9. I wrote unto you an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called to be a brother, a fornicator, or a covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such a one, know not to eat. Keep going. Yeah, down to the last verse. For what have I to do? To, for what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do ye not judge them that are within, but them that are without, y'all judge it. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Now, I want you to understand, just because I'm bringing out the spiritual intent of the Feast of Unleavened or Unfermented Fermentation Bread, I'm not, sent, I'm not telling anyone to not get it out your house. I'm not telling anyone to not get the... Uh, to not get the uh, uh, leaven bread what he said, out your house. He, he, he said, okay. he, he trying to say keep the law, but make sure you keep the spiritual intent because you yeah. can keep the letter of the law and still fail on the spiritual side and, 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 and end up in judgment. So it's a fine exactly. balance. It's a fine balance, okay? But it's just that I, I just tend to highlight not to teach any other commandment least, but I just tend to highlight that which is the most important thing. Because the scripture says, with all thy getting, get an understanding. And it says that wisdom is the what? Principal thing. Right. The word principal, at least in English, means the most important thing. Right. So the most important thing was for them to get was to get sin out of their lives. And, and Paul was speaking of concerning the leaven and unleavened bread in that in that particular chapter because he was he was appalled that in the church of Corinth, among the set apart ones of, 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 of Hamashia, that there was this type of uh, behavior being practiced, which was some sexual immorality of a man having his father's wife. Yeah, and he said, Y'all need to get that leaven up out of there. Get that leaven up out of there. In other words, get that wickedness up out of there. So leaven is symbolic of wickedness. Unleavened is symbolic of righteousness. And that that I conclude, let's give, get our elder uh, Timotheus up. Let's get his brother a hand. Praise to the Most High, Yahuwah, Bar Shem, Yahawashar, Hallelujah, Bar Wak Kadesh. Uh, and I also want to give much honor and praise to all my brothers and sisters that's out there pushing this truth. Uh, praise and, 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 and honor to the elders that are here. Apostle Malachi, uh, Brother Nehemiah, uh, 
I thank y'all for this opportunity here. Um, it was raining, I think, two Sabbaths ago, and, you know, when we have sheep that's out in the field that is not able to come to the assembly, uh, we should be able to avail ourselves to be with them. And uh, Brother Lee, at the time, his family, they couldn't make it out because we had bad storms that particular Shabbat. And uh, they asked if I can come over. So I came over and um, one of the things that I was studying concerning my own personal life was uh, decoding and, and, and casting down the things that I had previously had learned in the church. And the title of this uh, lesson is the second coming of the Mashiach is not the way they told us. Hallelujah. The second coming of the Mashiach is not the way that they told us. And one of the famous scriptures that they like to go to is uh, 1 Corinthians 1550 uh, through verse 57. You get that. First Corinthians what? First Corinthians fifteen, fifty through fifty-seven. Everybody there say Cain. 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 It reads, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yah, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall, ha shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to Yah, which giveth us the victory through our Adonai, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Now it was last year, during this very time, where this scripture here was being preached. And it was put in my spirit that why in the church that every time a seasonal holiday come around, they always preach a seasonal message? All right. <laughs> yeah. Bring it out. They always preach a seasonal message. Yeah. And the rest of the Bible goes untouched. Right. So I began to study this more in, in, in depthly. And uh, forgive me for those that, you know, don't like talking about death and what, what is to happen. But I want to just ease your mind because we're going to revisit this scripture here. We're going to revisit uh, 1 Corinthians because one of the things that they paint is the, the, the idea that when Hamashiach come, that, you know, the sky is going to be falling out of the, out of, uh, the airplane is going to be falling out of the skies. <laughs> And it's going to be so much chaos on the ground, and then all of a sudden the dead in Christ, and I'm just going to say it the way they said, the dead in Christ shall be uh, caught up first, and then those that are alive shall be caught up after. Okay? To meet him in the air. But never in the scriptures that I see where it says that we shall meet him in the air. So what I did was I, I did some studies and I started studying concerning this particular scripture even more. This is what I have found. First of all, we don't have to be afraid of death. All right. Our brothers and sisters, our forefathers back in, the, back in their day, they wasn't afraid of death. They wasn't afraid of death at all. If anyone challenged their faith or tried to get them to break Torah, they were willing to die for it. Right. Yes, sir. That's right. That's the same type of faith that we should have today concerning Torah. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. That no one can come between us 
in Abba Father. Hallelujah. No one. Wants to die. Yes, sir. And after that, the judgment. But I want to I want to point out something to you here. Matthew 24 and 9. We gotta get there, say Cain. 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 Matthew 24 and 9, read. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Mm. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Mm -hmm. But it also says that we will be hated by all nations. That's right. For my name's sake. Hated. It doesn't matter what race that we come up against, whether it be the Indians, Hispanics, the so-called Americans here, all race hates us. It's for a particular reason. That's right. Luke 21, 17 through 18. Mm -hmm. Let's turn there. Luke 21, 17 through 18. Okay. Everybody ever say Cain? Cain. All right. 21, 17 reads, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but there shall not an hair of your head perish. Now, it seems like a contradiction, don't it? Because in Matthew 24, 9, it says that uh, we shall be taken up and killed. In this particular verse, it says that not a hair on our head shall be harmed. That's right. Do you recall when Yahawashai was hung on that tree? And, they, and, and, and the prophecy goes that not a bone in his body shall be broken? Right. It wasn't. Not a bone. Okay? When the centurion soldier went around, to crush the knees of those that they saw that was alive to help expediate death, to speed up the, the rate of death. When they got to Yahweh Shah, he had already given up his spirit. He had already had passed away. Right. So therefore, they took a spear and jabbed it in his side until water and blood flowed. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, they did not crush a bone in his body. That's your Ua's way of showing the enemy that he is still in control. Hmm. So how is it that we shall be killed but not a hair on our head be disturbed or destroyed? Go with me to Luke 12, 4 through verse 4, uh, verse 4 through verse 7. Hmm. Alright, y'all there, Cain. Okay. Right, Luke 12, verse 4. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed the power to cast you into hell. Yeah, I say unto you, fear him. Are ye are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before Yah? But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. So, here it is. The scriptures say that we're not to fear the one that can destroy our body because flesh and blood is not going to inherit the kingdom of Yah. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's why it is appointed once unto man to die. But, when we keep Torah, and we keep his laws, his statutes, and his commandments, and be faithful until the end, regardless of what we think these people would do to us, not a hair on our head would be destroyed. 
Y'all said he has the very hairs on our head numbered. Hallelujah. And the reason why he said that is because we're not to be afraid of those that can kill the body, but be afraid of the one that has the power to destroy both body and soul. Right. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Both body and soul. Hallelujah. So therefore, when we read in Sirach 24, 38 through 42, which is Matthew 24, 38 through 42, if you turn there. And I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. So we can be out of here on time. Twenty-four, thirty-eight through forty-two. Thirty-eight through forty-two. Sorry, Matthew twenty-four, thirty-eight reads: For as in the days, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of Son of Man be. So. Look at what's going on here. The very same thing that's going on today. Everybody eating, drinking, being married, living their lives the way they want to live it. All right. Living in sin, living in homosexuality, trying to bring back the, the days of old. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. When the scripts explicitly tells us that no man knows the time nor the hour, not even the son himself knows that when he is to come back. No one knows. So how are we to be living our lives? We're to be living our lives by Torah, being faithful until the end. Read. Verse 38. I'm inside verse 40. 40. Then shall two be in the field. Then one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. Then one shall be taken and the other one left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Adonai doth come. Watch therefore. Hallelujah. Yeah. For no one knows when our Adonai come. That's right. Right. Two shall be in the field, one taken and one left behind. Mm -hmm. Does it mean that the one that was taken was living in sin? No. No. It just means that that one that was taken, y'all had appointed for that one to be taken. See, we don't know if we're going to be taken or if we're going to make it until the end. The thing is, is that we are to strive till that end. That's right. Whether y'all decides to take us in death or whether he allows us to live until the time Mashiach come, we are to be faithful in Torah. That's right. To be faithful. Yes, sir. Regardless of our situations in life, be faithful and diligent to the end. Now let's turn to Matthew 24 and 13. Everybody there say Cain? Cain. It reads, But he that shall endure unto the end, yes. the same shall be saved. Hallelujah. The same Hallelujah. shall be saved. Matthew 15 and 24. Okay. 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 15, 24. Yes. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So who did he come for? The house of Israel. The house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The house of Israel. Yes, sir. I can actually take it deeper, but I, I couldn't find the scripture. When he comes back, He's coming back for those that is keeping Torah. That's right. Right. Hallelujah. 
that's who he's coming back for because you're going to find it. I, I, I need the elders to help me on this. Uh, you will find in the scriptures where even those that are grafted in, which means those that are not Hebrews that are grafted in, will be able to make it too. Yes, sir. Bring Why? It out. Because they are keeping Torah. Torah. Right. Bring it out, brother. Keeping Torah. Yes, sir. Our main goal in life is to keep Torah. Yes, sir. Now, here's what's going to happen on that day. Because we don't know what, when this day is going to occur. But these are a group of scriptures that I have found uh, in my studies. Isaiah 47, excuse me, Isaiah 4 and 7. Excuse me, not Isaiah, I'm sorry, Jeremiah. Jeremiah 4, 7. Jeremiah 4, 7. Then we'll go to Isaiah 47. I'm, I'm going ahead of myself. So Jeremiah 4 and 7, when y'all get there, say Cain. 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 All right, Jeremiah 4 and 7 reads, The lion is come up from his thicket, and the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. He is gone forth from his place to make thy land desolate, and thy city shall be laid waste without an inhabitant. The lion is come, come up. Who is the lion? Yahweh shot. It's the lion. Can you imagine... Been in Africa. I went to Africa back in 2000. Went to Nigeria. And one of the things I thought about is lions. How they, you know, they're predatory animals. And how they, how they hunt. They sit back in the thicket and they wait for that right moment before they come out of that thicket with force. They're not coming out to give, give roses or anything. They're coming out for a purpose. And when they come out, they come out strong and mighty. In this scripture right here, it's talking about Yahawashai being that lion coming out of the thicket strong and mighty. And is a destroyer of the Gentiles, a destroyer of the other nations. Yes, sir. In and is on his way. I want to point out something. Remember when Trump got into office and he said that he was going to now turn our attention to space wars? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Trying to prepare for the return. Trying to prepare for the return. I have found out that there are many obs observatories that are now not allowing their stuff to go on site. They closed a lot of them. They closed a lot of them. Because they see what they are now calling Nibiru on its way toward the earth. They have talked about this once before. Well, it's in the scripture where it happened once before. Yes, sir. But this particular thing that they see is the coming of our Mashiach. It's not some planet that they're trying to say as if we live on a planet ourselves. Isaiah 47, 1 through 3. Yeah, that's a okay. Cain. 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 Yeah, 47. Isaiah 47, chapter 47, verses 1 through 3. Cain. Cain. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind meal. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover the thigh. Pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yeah, 
Thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. Mm. Now, I'm doing another study right now, and it's concerning the Chaldeans and uh, the daughter of Babylon. And what I have found out, just to tie it into this, is the Chaldeans and the daughter of Babylon is the Arab nations. Okay? Our brother Esau and Edom, they were Arabs. They lived just south of where we uh, resided in, in Judea, in Israel. And what you see here in this scripture is that they have never had war on their land. They have never seen that. It says, sit thee down. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Tender and delicate to what? War. Yahushua is not coming to shake hands with them because of what they've done to us. <clears throat> Back in 70 AD, what did they do? They helped sell us into captivity to the uh, to kill them mm -hmm. and in the sub-saharan and to the great say it again the sub-saharan slave trade and sub-saharan and slave trade that's right they had their hands full they just sat back and they watched mm -hmm. and they profit from it and they still do it today and they still do it today yeah. look at what happened to the, the, the American reporter over in Saudi Arabia. How he was assassinated. And now all of a sudden, they want to try to cover it up and uh, it, 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 it'll be okay. And hush it on, push it under the rug so that Americans would turn their minds to other things that's going on. Mm -hmm. Yes, Elder. But look at the Africans reaping what they saw. They yes. Being sold over now. Yes. Mm -hmm. They sold us now. They being sold. There was a video that I saw not too long ago, where one of our brothers was bound, tied up, being beat and stabbed with a knife in his back. There are tons of videos like that on YouTube right now for what's going on with our people over in their land. Right now. That's why it's not good to go over there. Yeah. Exactly. Isaiah 13, verse 6 through 9. Now this is what's going to be happening when they see Yahweh Shai coming. And if you really pay attention to the news, many of them are even scared right now. Yeah. Many people, many are people of the Caucasian ethnicity that I speak with are fearful for what is going to be happening. A lot of them be on YouTube every yeah. day about how spirit they are. Yes. Yes. 13 and 6 reads, How ye, for the day of the Most High is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty, Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid. Pains and sorrow shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Most High cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. But the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked of their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Now look at here. It tells them how ye for the day of Yahuwah is at hand. That's right. How? Cry out. Scream. 
Because when Yahushua comes, he's going to be bringing destruction on that day. He's going to be bringing so much destruction. Why? Look at all the things that they've done to us in the past. Husbands, if someone came into your home and defiled your home and pillaged your wife and murdered your wife, how outraged would you be? I'd be killing angry. Man. <laughs> killing angry. Man. Do not be in the bag. So if we are, if we, as wives to the Most High, are the apple of His eye, and we was put away for a reason because we was, you know, our forefathers was uh, worshiping all these other idols and so forth, right. being the heart of it. Mm -hmm. So I can understand why we were put into bondage for that punishment. But they took it too far. That's right. They took it way too far. That's right. When our women and so forth would have their children and they would put them down so they could go pick cotton or whatever it is they need to do. And then the master would come and take their babies and use them for gator bait. Man. Can you imagine how that woman felt when she turned back around and saw her baby was gone? Yeah. But yet she has to get the master's baby and, 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 and breastfeed that master's baby. The countless of rapings and so forth that happen. Yahawashah is, is not going to be <laughs> like when he come back. He's not going to be as what they told us that when he come back, he's just going to have his arms stretched out wide. Come, my children. No, he's not. It's a keep it real. Make it like Zechariah 1.15. Zechariah what? Zechariah 1.15. Let's get that. Everybody there say came when you get there. Yeah, he's saying he was just a little mad at us. And just think how mad he is at them. If he's just hey. a little mad at us and we're going through all that, I, yes. you know. Look at all the things we went through, and he was just a little he mad at us. Was a little man. Yeah. All right, it reads Zechariah 1 and 15. And I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. For I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. Mm. Mm. Read that again, brother. And I, and I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. For I was but a little displeased. And they help forth the affliction. Mm. Now that just brought to mind in the scripture where the rich man, where he said, uh, unto his soul that take to eat, drink, and be merry, and take thine ease. Mm -hmm. That's how <clears throat> these people are. They do their dirt and they want to take it easy. Right. But then they don't they they know who the most high is. But they also know in scripture that they cannot make it to the end. They also know that they will be judged. They also know that they have condemned themselves. Mercy. Mercy. They knew before we did. That's why it's so important. You know, it, it pains my heart. Uh, I look at a, a, a lot of videos and I get into my word and I study and I see a lot of our brothers cutting each other down for a little bit of word because they can't come together. Oh, the scriptures say this. Oh, the scriptures say that. Exactly, brother. Bring that out. And they fight so much on the letter of the law as go. apostles say, they fight so much on the letter of the law that they forget that the principle of it. Yes, sir. Does it really matter? Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and do this demonstration. Uh, Brother Ray J, bring me that glass. Please. I've seen it so much on Facebook. It made Christians leave the Hebrew baby. Can that glass fill it up halfway with water? Please. Halfway with water. In that kitchen. 
It's, it's around the corner. Frank showing with the strap. Right here, brother. Frank showing with the kitchen. Over who's right. Over who's right. You know, and the thing about it is, okay, I, I don't cl uh, claim to know it all. None of us do. I don't. You know what, how much, what, I hinge on the word, I hinge on the Ruach, I hinge on Yahya, and I hinge on you all. Especially my brothers that know, that's been in this truth a lot longer than me. I want to show you this demonstration concerning what they talk about. Esau, Edom, okay? In the scriptures, and I'm going to have to bring it out in my next teaching, it, you know, they talk about Esau and Edom, and we already know that they have mixed their seed together, and Shittim and the Grecians. Uh, we already know that the Grecians are the descendants of Alexander the Great. Okay? Yes. Now, Alexander the Great had conquered Edom. And when he conquered Edom, it says in the scriptures, hold this phone just for a sec. If you turn to Jasher 90, verse 8 through 9. Jasher chapter 90, verse 8 through 9. Chapter Jasher 90, verses 90, 8 through 9. Okay. Verses 8 through 9. And it reads, And the children of Chittim ruled over Edom. And Edom became under the hand of the children of Chittim, and became one kingdom from that day. And from that time, they could no more lift up their heads, and their kingdom became one with the children of Chittim. Their kingdom became one with the children of, 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 of Chittim. So what does that say? Here's the seed of Edom. Here's the seed of Chittim. Uh-oh. And they amalgamated. What just happened? And they both become mixed. one. It mixed together, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Both of them were Jacob. It mixed together. <laughs> They became one. And from generation to generation, they either dilute it or they keep it mixed. It's like if you keep mixing it with water and more water and more water, it's going to go back to its original water form. Say that again. Yeah, you keep mixing that mix with water, more water, and more water, mm -hmm. it's going to go back to it. Exactly. Exactly. If I remember correctly, I believe the scriptures say that by the fourth generation, if you stay yeah. with the same yeah. generation, yeah, that your that. blood would then be cleansed. Okay? So therefore... When I look around and, and we're fighting over who's Esau, who's Edom, they've all mixed. But the thing that we don't have to worry about is, we don't have to worry about who is Esau and who's Edom. What we have to worry about is keeping that Torah, yes, sir. keeping yeah. that law, yes, sir. and walking by that law, help each other. Because this time of grace, this time of grace, this is the time when we can really help each other. I've been in the, the, the false truth for a, a number of years of my life. I'm 50 years old now. And I was 49 when I came into this truth. 49. I've been in since September of last year. And, and yes, 
We weren't called to preach Esau genealogies, but the truth, the salvation, of repentance unto salvation and the repentance. keeping of the commandments. Yes, yes, sir. And that's yes, what they miss. They the preaching of genealogy, and that's right. not Messiah say, go teach them all right. that I uh, yep. taught you. He's yes. trying to connect with people so that they can learn the correct Torah. Yes, right. sir. And they hate. They hate. Well, don't give y'all nothing to work with because he is love and he said you can give your body to be burned without love it profit you nothing so he can't work in a ministry of hate that's why it's turning people away that's exactly. right yep. that's really exactly good. exactly yeah. that's good and that's what's going on but then they want to call on top of that those that are just coming into this truth and don't know it like they do or like they should know it shall i say the two-thirds. But who are the two-thirds? Okay. The two-thirds are those that are y'all's people that are not keeping Torah. Not keeping it. Because he's is explicitly coming back for those that are keeping his laws and commandments. He said, if you love me, keep my what? Commandments. Commandments. My commandments. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Edges, chapter 13. Second Edges, chapter 13, verse 1 through 13. First read verse 1 through 11. Verse 1 through 11. Yes. All right. And it came to pass after Yahweh. Came. Came. All right. And it came to pass after seven days, I dreamed a dream by night, and lo, there arose a wind from the sea, that it moved all the ways thereof. And I behold, I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when and when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice. Like as the earth fell it when it filleth the fire. And after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of the number from the four winds out of heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. But I beheld, and lo, he had, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. But I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven, and I could not. And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid, and yet durst fight. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth, as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. And they were all mixed together. The blast of the fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempters, and fell with violence up, upon the multitude which was prepared to fight. <laughs> and burned them every one, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. Now, can you imagine Estrus receiving his answer for praying? For praying? Esther was a mighty man. And seeing the vision of what is going to happen on this day, how when Yahweh parts that sky, and that the people are going to be in so much chaos, fighting one another, out of fear. Out of fear. So much things are going to be happening within the inner city out of fear. Raping, stealing, killing, pillaging, trying to get food. The biggest scare is going to be food. Look at what happened overseas. What was that city? Uh, the one that... Uh, Ran out of food and so forth, and they were showing them on the news where. Uh, no. It was over in one of the they European cities. Breaking the glass, going up in the snow. Yes. It, it was a city 
uh, in France, in one of the French areas, I think it was, uh, that uh, they're, they're, they're out of food and so forth. It, the, the city and so forth has been shut down. Uh, uh, they had total blackouts. And many people were saying that this was a trial run for what is going to happen in the states. Right. Come, come into the states near you. Okay? And, and what was going on, you could hear the women down there screaming and saying that enough is enough. Saying that the, uh, there was reports going on saying that women were selling themselves for rotten meat. Just so they can eat. And when I saw this, it reminded me of when Yeshua was telling his disciples to beware of the day when the city would be surrounded by soldiers. And the things that would be happening to the women and to the children and to the men within the walls of the city. How women and so forth would even eat their own babies mm -hmm. just to survive. Yeah. Mercy, mercy, this mercy. very same thing is going to be happening again during the coming of your house shot. So who is he coming for? Jeremiah 50, 33 and 37. And after I hit this, I'm going to have to go ahead and close this. And I'm going to have to do a part two to finish this up. Jeremiah 50, Jeremiah 50 verse 33 through 37. So who is he coming for? He's coming for a, a, a specific purpose. Go ahead. 33 through 37. All right, we read Jeremiah 50, 33, verse through 37. Thus said the Most High of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Yehuda were oppressed together, and all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. Their Redeemer is strong. The Most High of hosts is his name. He shall, thoroughly, he shall thoroughly plead their cause that he may give rest to their land and be and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. A sword is upon the Chaldeans. A sword is upon the Chaldeans. Mm. A sword. What is that topic? War is upon the Chaldeans. A sword is, a, is, is a, an instrument of war. Read. Said Yahuwah. And upon the inhabitants of Babylon. And upon the inhabitants of Babylon. Mm -hmm. So now we got two people named. The Chaldeans and the Babylons. Read. And upon her princes and upon her wise men. A sword is upon the liars. Ho, 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 ho. Last Shabbat, we talked about this lying thing. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we brought out was one of the things that Yahuwah hates is a liar. And apostles asked us the question, when will we stop lying? When will we stop lying? Start telling the truth, even if it hurts. Make the truth your life. But it says here, a sword is upon the liars. Read. And they shall do. A sword is upon her mighty men, and they shall be dismayed. A sword is upon their horses, and upon their chariots, and upon all the mingled people that are in the midst of her. And they shall become as women. A sword is upon her treasures, and they shall be robbed. So is the Hawashai coming back for a specific country? No. For the righteous. He's coming back for the righteous. Mm -hmm. But before he gathered the righteous, he's going to be separating the wheat from the tares. That's right. 
And the first thing he said was, gather up the tares. Mm -hmm. And the first thing when he comes back, he's going to be gathering that tares. Right. He's going to be gathering the tares. And then after he gathers the tares, on the next time I bring this lesson to you, my brothers and sisters, he's going to be gathering his people. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Get a button on the hand. Praise God. Beautiful. Beautiful message. I certainly enjoyed that message. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm a note taker. <laughs> So I, I, I wrote some notes down as the brother was teaching, especially from uh, uh, Isaiah, the 13th chapter, and also Zephaniah, the, the, the first chapter, as well. Uh, Zechariah. Okay. Okay, Zachariah, okay, okay. Um, so I certainly enjoyed that lesson uh, because I'm a student first. Be a listener. To be a student first, you have to be a listener first. You know, uh, that's why Hamashiach uh, Yahusha said, go and what make disciples. In other words, go and make students. Uh, and, and to be a good student, you have to, like my old junior high of a teacher, my old junior high teacher would tell me, you know, uh, you need to listen. Pay attention. You understand? So, uh, uh, but I'm always a student. And I certainly enjoyed this lesson, especially the ones that he brought out about, um, about, uh, about how we shall be hated by all ethnicities. Uh, but we need to have faith. And confidence in the scriptures and in Hamashiach and in keeping Torah that uh, if we endure in keeping the commandments that not a hair on our head will be touched. Uh, a thousand may fall at one side and ten thousand at the other side but if we just endure until the end while keeping Torah we got to endure keeping the commandment not to be a liar when everybody around us is lying. Mm. When everybody around you on your job is lying and getting promoted. Mm -hmm. And you being honest and trying to do the right thing. Don't you fall to that trick. Don't you fall to what everybody else is doing. Don't follow the multitude to do evil. That's right. You continue to, 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 to be honest and, and, and uh, to be right. And not to not to speak deceit, you understand? Uh, 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 just to get a paycheck or a, a higher wage, or uh, to get promoted, you understand? Because the Most High, He sees your righteousness, and He's going to reward you. And when everybody else around you is is is, is OPP, committing adultery, and all types of sexual immorality. You understand? And you feel like you're the only one that's a virgin, young man. Or you're the only one that's a virgin, young woman. Right. You understand? You hold to your virtues. Right. You hold to them scriptures and you endure until the Most High bless you with the right one. So we got to endure keeping Torah. When everybody around you is eating pork, shrimps, and catfish. And it smells good. You understand? <laughs> you know, you endure until the end, like the brother was saying, like the other was saying. You endure to the end by keeping what? Torah. Right. Lot endured. He was grieved while he was in Sodom and Gomorrah, but he what? He endured. 
So we got to endure in this truth. It's not so much as what they are doing. It's so much as what you and I are doing. That's right. Mm -hmm. Are we keeping Torah as Hamashiach said, if you love him, keep his Torah. Right. Uh, at this particular time, we're going to prepare ourselves to take up an offering. Uh, Brother Frank, and uh, uh, we're going to ask that uh, Sister Coles will come up and uh, give us a song. Sister, uh, you can come out with her as well. You can you can come out with us as yeah as well, okay? Uh, uh, one thing about it, you know, when it when it comes to praising the Most High, we should want to jump up here and do it. You understand? For the Most High, love it or what? A cheerful giver. So while they singing, uh, we're gonna uh, go ahead and take up an offering. If anyone has anything to give, we do take up an offering because we do feed families. We are all we also are raising money to get our own building, and at this at this particular time, uh, this good pastor he uh, allows us to use this facility, uh, uh, and we do uh, uh, pay him as well. Uh, uh, so uh, that's that's why we take up an offering, and because it is biblical, you understand? It it, it is biblical because I, I understand that you know Hebrew Israelites coming to the truth. And they're like, well, the tithing wasn't money. Well, of course it wasn't money, you understand? But see, you cannot try taking some crops to pay your bills, to pay your bills today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're under a different economical system today. You understand? And that just won't, that just won't work today. You know what I'm saying? So uh, if it's in your heart, if you enjoyed the message, that the brother brought and that I brought also uh, prepare yourselves to give an offering. We would greatly appreciate it. Let's get these sisters back here to give us a song. My brother. Come on up, sisters. My brother. My brother. Uh, I want to apologize if anyone think that uh, I was trying to uh, do anything outside of that. And also in Korah, in the 16th chapter, he wanted to take the position of Moses, uh, but it says it is a small thing unto you that the name of Israel, Yashorah, be separated unto you for the congregation of Yashorah to bring you near to himself and to do the service of the tabernacle to Yahuwah and to stand before the congregation to minister to him. So they were there to minister unto the congregation. And so this was done before the service. So in all respect, I don't want the priesthood because I was called to my own. And this and that. And so we all supposed to share with one another. Yeah. And knowledge comes up above edified. Yeah. And then also he said, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Hallelujah. And because you reject knowledge, he said, I reject you from being priest with me. And how long will you hate wisdom, you simple ones? Right. Wisdom cries at the street. So we must encourage one another as it is today to grow. Mm -hmm. And so we don't reject knowledge. Right. Y'all go ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. I'm not, uh, it's, it's, it's a sentence, and then I'm going to hand you the mic, love. That's all it is. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know if this is working. But um, what I noticed this morning, and the growth that different people, different levels, that was preached to, that everybody's not on the same level. Some people still say certain things, people still believe some things, but we're all trying to strive for that path, the truth, the truth. So I know... I'm not going to sing the whole song, but I know that this right here, somebody went through this at some part of their walk. Okay. Bear with me. It said, uh, it was on the color purple. Yes, Lord. It said, uh, Hallelujah. ever wonder why you can't sleep at night? Maybe
Oh, give thanks unto Deya, for he is good, for he is good. Oh, give thanks unto Deya, for he is good, yes, he is good, for he is worthy. song of Moses like brother Azar brought out during Passover sundown service. At this time we're going to prepare ourselves to dismiss uh, our chief elder uh, back there on the camera uh, 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 his sister departed so uh, we want to uh, be ready to conclude because he has to go over there for uh, uh, to assist uh, and we want to pray for our elder that the most high would comfort him and his family, okay? Yes, sir. My uncle passed last week. Okay. My mother's brother, so pray for her as well. Okay, let's let's pray for our brother, our dear brother Azar as well. Right now, let's pray. Oh Abba Yah, we come to you in the name of Yahawasha or Yahusha. That name that is above every name. We pray that you will comfort those who are mourning the departure of a loved one, brother Azar and his loved ones who are mourning the departure of his uncle. Elder, our chief elder right here, comfort him and his loved ones who are mourning the departure of his dear sister. We know that in you there is eternal life. And we know that these men have prayed over their loved ones even before they departed. And we trust that you, Abba Yah, will See to the comfort of the loved ones who have been left behind. We pray that you will comfort them with all comfort. Because the scripture says that you are the Elohim of all comfort. And because of you we have hope. And as Elder Timotheus brought out. Timotheus brought out. That because of you we have no fear of death. We only have an expectation of what is to come. So we pray that you will comfort everyone that is mourning right now in the name of Yahweh, Shah, Yahushua. Everyone say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, once again, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming, taking time out of your out of your reverence for the Most High. Let's give Elder Timotheus another hand for that beautiful message. And he will have the opportunity to bring out part two. Uh, next Shabbat as well uh, and I really appreciate him because I, I, I really didn't feel like uh, <laughs> teaching this morning you understand <laughs> but but it, it, it was of the most high because it was in my root uh, that uh, that he bring forth the message okay uh, it was definitely in my root uh, and I, I want to I just want to really stress this. I really love you all and I'm praying for you all. And let's continue to witness to our people in love and kindness. Uh, over there, I would like for everyone